Welcome to our time of scripture reading and devotional reflection for Wednesday, July the 6th, 2022. I'm Pastor Brian J. Monroe, and this is coming to you from my office in Kitimat First Baptist Church in beautiful Kitimat, British Columbia. I'm reading scripture so that you can hear it as so many Christians have heard the word and sometimes only heard the word. We're fortunate to be literate. We're fortunate to have copies of the scriptures, but the vast majority of Christians who ever were had to hear the word read to them. And there is something very powerful in that when you consider how the faith in Christ was spread through the simple speaking of the word, the reading of the word, the contemplation of the word. So that's, let's do that together. We have three passages to... Uh, to hear today, beginning with Psalm number six. To the choir master with stringed instruments according to the Sheminith, a Psalm of David. O Lord, rebuke me not in your anger, nor discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. Heal me, O Lord, for my bones are troubled. My soul also is greatly troubled. But you, Lord, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, deliver my life. Save me from the, for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who will give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eye wastes away because of grief. It grows weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my plea. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and be put to shame in a moment. 2 Kings chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. Now the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, See the place where we dwell under your charge is too small for us. Let us go to the Jordan and each of us get there a log and let us make a place for us to dwell there. And he answered, Go. Then one of them said, Be pleased to go with your servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. But as one was falling, but as one was felling a log, his axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, "Alas, my master! It was borrowed." Then the man of God said, "Where did it fall?" Then he showed him the place. He cut off a stick and threw it in there and made the iron float. And he said, "Take it up." So he reached out his hand, and he took it. Luke chapter 10, verses 13 to 16. This is the Lord Christ speaking. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But it will be more bearable in the judgment for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. This is your word, Almighty Father God. May you be praised always for the gracious and generous provision of it to us. And may you grant us through the power of the Holy Spirit the ability to hear it, to receive it, to have it enter into our hearts and minds and very spirits, and therein work what is good and pleasing to your will. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now from Oswald Chambers, my utmost for his highest, we read the reading for July the 6th entitled, Vision and Reality. 
The burning sand will become a pool, the thirsty ground bubbling springs. In the haunts where jackals once lay, grass and reeds and papyrus will grow. Isaiah 35, verse 7. We always have visions before a thing is made real. When we realize that although the vision is real, it is not real in us, then is the time that Satan comes in with his temptations. And we are apt to say it is no use to go on. Instead, the vision be of the, instead of the vision becoming real, there has, come, there has come the valley of humiliation. Life is not as idle ore, but iron dug from central gloom and battered by the shocks of doom to shape and use. God gives us the vision, then he takes us down to the valley to batter us into the shape of the vision. And it is in the valley that so many of us faint and give way. Every vision will be made real if we will have patience. Think of the enormous leisure of God he is never in a hurry. We are always in such a frantic hurry. In the light of the glory of the vision, we go forth to do things, but the vision is not real in us yet. And God has to take us into the valley and put us through fires and floods to batter us into shape until we get to the place where he can trust us with the veritable reality. Ever since we had the vision, God has been at work getting us into the shape of the ideal. And over and over again, we escape from his hand and try to batter ourselves into our own shape. The vision is not a castle in the air, but a vision of what God wants you to be. Let him put you on his wheel and whirl you as he likes. And as sure as God is God and you are you, you will turn out exactly in accordance with the vision. Don't lose heart in the process. If you have ever had the vision of God, you may try as you like to be satisfied on a lower level, but God will never let you. Let us pray. Father, Give us the vision. And for those of us who have received the vision, what it is to be yours, fully yours, do not let us give up on the vision. Strengthen us in the power of your Holy Spirit. Continue to draw us to you in ways that make the vision real for us so that we can together be a part of what it is you are doing, which is shalom bringing to the world, shalom bringing and rest and peace and righteousness to all the things that are left, all the things that we must uh, see in your vision. We pray this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for spending some time listening to Scripture reading and devotional and prayer. And until we're able to be together again to do more of the same, I bid you in the name of Jesus Christ, Shalom.